if you see me walking down the halls. Hey guys, my name's Laura and I'm also a grade 12 and I've been at South since grade nine. My favorite subjects are English and dance and some of my favorite memories were during dance show. Um, and I really hope that you guys get to experience that this year, whether you're participating or if you're just watching your friends. I can't wait to see you all really soon. And if you have any questions ever, just don't hesitate to come and ask. Hi guys, um, my name is Ginny. I'll also be in grade 12. Um, I finished my grade eight at a small private school called Peak Academy. My favorite classes at South are business and of course dance. One thing that really helped me to feel a part of the school was participation in the school sports. So I really recommend, you know, getting out to try out for sports that you're familiar with, or if you're not, because it's a great way to make friends and to get to know teachers. Um, like Laura said, don't be scared to come and ask questions if you see us in the halls or just ask about anything and we'll help. Hello everyone. Uh, my name is Brian Schmidt. I am, I've been in high school a very long time. I'm a teacher and um, I just wanted to let you guys know that I'm the link teacher. So there's an actual course uh, around link crew and it's a leadership course. And um, we, I've been uh, in the past, I've taught the course quite a bit and I just want to let you guys know all the parents and all the students out there that this course, our main goal, is to make the transition for you guys and gals amazing. So that's that's our main focus is to help you guys and uh, make sure that you have a smooth transition and that you make connections and get involved in our school. So it's when you see these yellow shirts around, you're going to be talking to us and we're there for you and we got your back. So I just wanted to let you know that. I'm also a teaching in phys ed, so you'll see me around a lot. And then when sports get going, um, please don't hesitate to talk to me about any of this, any of the sports that you're interested in. And um, as the year rolls on, we'll we'll let you know all of your um, potential opportunities. Thank you. Hi there, I am Mrs. Jenny Oli, and you are already sending in your questions for us. So that is so great. Um, I uh, love to help out with this Link Crew organization. Um, and uh, But more importantly, I love teaching grade nine geography. So I may have a few of you uh, this year. And so I would just like to uh, remind everyone, we're gonna introduce Ms. Pike who's on here uh, as well, um, and then get into our questions. But uh, before I do that, just reminding you, I do have the email address up here that you can send your questions into. Uh, we may take it off for a little bit and then try to put it back on, um, but those are where you can answer your questions. We'll try to get to as many and all of them as we can during this stream. Um, and uh, if not, you can hold off. I think someone mentioned hold off your questions uh, or will mention and until um, we see you on your first day. So I will hand this over to Ms. Pike and then uh, back to Ainsley. Well, good morning, everybody. Our new grade nine class, we're so excited that you're coming. Um, and I really wanted to pop in today to say hello for you to see my face um, because I am the grade nine guidance counselor. So what that means is I'm your person. If you have questions about school, if you have questions about um, you know courses that you wanna take or, you, scheduling things or if you're struggling with anything you know sometimes coming into a new place can be really overwhelming um, and if you need a safe place to go if you need to just catch your breath I'm your person come to guidance say I'd really like to see Mrs. Spike and I'm there okay so if you have any of those needs if you if you have a question or you can always come by and just say hi um, I love meeting the students I'm so looking forward to meeting you all next week I'll be out around the hallways say hello say hello so what you might see next week is this <laughs> I really wanted you to know 
there is a face under the mask, okay? Um, and, uh, you know, I'm the person for you to, to come to uh, at any time. It's just for grade nine. Um, you will uh, inherit a new guidance counselor then for the rest of your time at South Carlton. But I'm all about helping you fit in and feeling great about coming to South um, and encouraging you to get involved. And our link crew are amazing. These are, this is their whole purpose is to help you fit in and to give you support and to answer your questions. So when you do see those yellow shirts around the school, you know that you've got a friend, someone who is going to smile and say hello back to you. Okay. So don't forget that on your first day when you come. I'm going to go. I'm doing lots of scheduling and we have lots of new registrations today. Uh, so I just wanted to come and let you see my face uh, and know who your person is. OK, think ugly fish, Pike. OK, that's me. I'm your person. <laughs> Hope you guys have a great day. I'm sure you have lots and lots of questions um, and I will be seeing you next week. Thank you, Ms. Pike. Um, let's get into our Q&As now. So the four of us are going to take turns answering some of the questions asked by you before and some general questions about the South Carlton High School experience. Let's start with a question everyone is probably asking right now as we approach our first day of school next week. Laura, over to you. Sorry about that. So our first question, was um were you nervous for your first day of school personally i was very nervous and i could barely sleep the night before but as soon as i got to school i felt really comfortable because all the teachers and the link crew leaders were super nice and super supportive um they always helped me to get where i wanted to go and answered all the questions um you're gonna make a lot of new friends whether it be through um school clubs teams or just your classes in general and do remember that okay our second question comes from uh Goulburn middle school and uh what is something that can help transition yourself into high school honestly the best piece of it is Honestly, the best piece of advice I could give you is to get involved. And I know everyone has told you that and everyone will continue to say this, but um, take it from me personally. Throughout my grade nine year, I didn't really get involved in high school activities. Grade 10, I started to join a few, but then COVID came and all the activities were canceled. So I was kind of left high and dry. I was lucky enough to have made new friends through my classes, but a big part of the transition is all the new people, as Lara said. When you join a sport or club, you have an automatic group of people that you have a shared interest with. Academics wise may be a little different though. Classes are longer and workload is a little bit heavier, but it's always manageable. Extra help is available, I know, for at least both math and science uh, a few days a week. Meaning that if, if you have any questions or are really struggling, there is a teacher or many teachers in a specific room or on a Google Meet um, that can help you answer your questions and help you work through any assignments or homework questions you may have. Also, talk to your teachers. All of your teachers want to see you succeed in their classes, and whether it's answering questions before a big test or trying to help you work around a busy uh, busy sports schedule your teachers can help and if you're ever lost or need of help find one of us as we have said multiple times wearing these yellow t-shirts and we're always help, happy to help you get adjusted to high school all right um i'm answering this third question and it's someone from cars on the rito who asks do you enjoy having longer classes? And I believe that the classes used to be 75 minutes were longer than your ones in grade eight, but now I think we've pushed it. We're having two and a half hour classes this year. Um, personally, I enjoy having longer classes. Um, it gives you more time to get work done and also gets um, you get to know your classmates better. Um, longer classes give you the, opp the opportunity to do cooler things, for example, dissections, science labs, or big group projects. In Woodshop and Auto, the projects be, um, are more realistic and enjoyable because you're not spending the majority of time putting things away or cleaning up. 
and you're getting more work done. So, yeah. Um, a student from ALC asks, what was the biggest change between schools and was it scary? So I found that there were two big changes between middle school and high school, and that was the amount of work and the amount of people. So I can't speak for the applied or college classes, but in academic and university classes, I uh, expect homework every night and probably an hour of it per class. That's in my opinion anyways, it might be different stories. But that's, that's what I found. Um, if you ever do feel overwhelmed with your workload this year, go get some extra help and maybe contact gui guidance and uh, book an appointment to talk about your workload. Uh, the amount of people was the second biggest change from GMS to South, going from maybe 80 grade eights at GMS to 350 grade nines at South was a big jump. This isn't a bad thing though. It gives you a great opportunity to meet new people and make new friends. Uh, the transition to grade eight to grade nine wasn't overly scary for me, but I just didn't know what to expect. Uh, there were a lot of unknowns, but hopefully this Q&A Google Meet is getting rid of some of those unknowns and will make an easier transition for you guys this year. So this next question is from ALC and it is, is it hard to remember where all your classes are at first? So, yes, it does take some time to get used to the layout of the school because it is pretty big, but there's teachers and us link crew leaders will be around wearing these yellow shirts to help you out. Um, feel free to ask anyone in the halls, though. Um, if you're lost, try not to ask other grade nines because they're probably lost as well, but I'm sure the older grades can help you find your class. Hopefully by the first day of school, the administrative team will give you a map and it's pretty easy to figure out once you have the map but it takes about a week to figure out where all your classes are plus you'll only have two classes to get to a day so it's pretty simple and straight up um so you don't need to stress over the classes and stuff and it just takes time Okay, so a student from CARS asked, how do you find out about sports and what's available to you? So um, things like that are normally communicated to students through um, announcements at the school, which I'm not sure if they're gonna happen this year, but uh, um, normally when they do, all this stuff is, um, communicated to you, but we also do have a lot of online so resources. Like um, we have a bunch, a bunch of uh, Instagram accounts, and we have a Twitter account run by, by the school with all school updates. Um, and we also have an awesome school website. It always has. It always gives me the information that I'm looking for so if that's you should check that out um, um, also don't ever hesitate to ask any faculty like a teacher a coach um, guidance counselor or just like any administrator um, anyone would be glad to help you out um, and then also do take advantage of All right, so another question from ALC is where are the best washrooms and water fountains? So I'd say the best washrooms at South are the ones by the office and the best water fountains also by the office. But I'd still recommend bringing your own water bottle from home with your own water. Uh, this year with the water fountains, uh, you aren't allowed to drink directly from them just because your mouth is right next to the metal piece for it's not COVID safe. Uh, we can still use the water fountains to refill your water bottle if you're stuck. I will also note, adding on to Nate's point, that um, the blue hall bathroom, you'll know where that is once you get in. That was usually the busiest. So if you're looking to avoid people, I would suggest not going to the blue hall bathroom because it's very populated most of the time, um, especially between classes or at lunch. I don't know how things are going to work with COVID, but as whatever I remember, it was always busy. 
Um, so this next question I know for me personally was definitely a stressor and it was, will there be a lot of homework? And there definitely is more homework than elementary or middle school, but it isn't a crazy amount as long as you stay on top of it. If you're worried about how your school workload would affect your extracurricular activities, the biggest suggestion I have, and it works personally the best for me, is to make lists and schedules for yourself. Knowing everything you have going on and having it all in one place makes life a lot easier. Nothing is unmanageable so long as you don't procrastinate it. That is something I learned and um, had a few nights up until 2 a.m. working on some history assignments. I definitely remember that. So um, as someone with a very busy extracurricular um, load and work as well, stay on top of your stuff and use the lunch hour definitely to your advantage. All right, so our next question is from someone from GMS and it was, do teachers favor students? So in my experience, um, I believe that if you put in the effort and um, like if you're, if you're always handing stuff in on time, you really should have no problem and you're gonna get treated fairly, but do keep in mind that if you mess around a lot in class or if you don't hand things in, um, that will be a problem because it is more serious in high school when it comes to that stuff. Um, my advice to you is just to listen to the teachers, ask questions when you need them, and just try your best to put in as much effort as you can. Um, leading up to what uh, Ainsley said about procrastination, a lot of people say that grade nine doesn't really matter when it comes to grades, but take it from me, grade nine is when you should really start to work on your work ethic, your time management, because this is the year where you have a little bit of like less workload than obviously the future years in high school. So for sure, try to work on that so that it'll be more manageable for you in the future. All right, so next we've got a comment instead of a question and it is just a GMS student saying they're excited about the hockey and preparing for their future and meeting new people. And I love this, qu this comment, sorry, and I love that people are excited to be a part of the athletic program. I've personally played on like the hockey, field hockey, football, I think I did golf too. Um, and I know firsthand that every team here is super inclusive and it makes it super easy to make new friends, especially when you're coming in to a new school. Um, sorry about that. Um, the high school sports, um, it's kind of a commitment as well. So it consists of practices and games throughout the season, but that gives you time to connect with people and connect with your teammates. Um, once again, the coaches who volunteer their time, they, they're volunteering, they love the game. And um, so they wanna be there and they wanna help you and it's always a really good time. So, it allows you to meet new teachers who you might not have teaching you, but both boys and girls teams are varsity and have very successful past seasons. So you might just win gold medal with your team. If it's okay, right. I'll jump in right now. And um, you were talking about sports and I'd like to introduce someone who's not only our principal of the school, but also heavily involved in uh, coaching at our school. Um, he's a positive influence and uh, definitely a leader in the school. And we're very lucky to have him. And I'd like to introduce him to everyone and I'm sure he'll have a couple words for you. Um, Mr. Arden, how are you doing, sir? Hello, Mr. Schmidt. Uh, wonderful, thanks for that introduction. And uh, I appreciate uh, the opportunity to uh, welcome our grade nines officially. Um, you know, it's an exciting time of year, but it's also a, a, a nervous time of year for some, and, and that's uh, perfectly fine. If you're nervous, be nervous. Um, luckily, that the feeling will dissipate uh, when you find out just how much of a community uh, school we are. Um, you're getting a taste of it uh, with these incredible uh, link crew leaders that we have here today, but uh, South Carleton overall is uh, a friendly place. I did want to say, um, you know, that while link crew uh, welcoming is something that happens each and every year, this year we're, we're coming back, uh, you're coming to a new school during a global pandemic. So, so 
there are some unique uh, uh, things related to that. Um, I want to send along this message, and that is that academically, you are exactly where you need to be in order to be successful. So there, there can be a feeling like the last two years has been impacted by COVID, and it obviously has. But students who are of ninth grade age around the entire world are in the exact same spot. There is no one behind. You are where you are, and it's going to be not just good enough, but actually quite good for lending to success when you get here to South Carleton. Also related to that, I know people talk about how good a, a school we are academically, and we we do, our graduates win awards and scholarships and, and that sort of thing, and, and, and we have really good academic programs. But I don't think people realize how good we are at supporting our students when they're struggling, if they're struggling, on, on either an emotional side or an academic side. And we are, I've been around, believe me, I didn't get this old looking just here at South Carleton. I've had many uh, um, jobs in the Auto Carleton District School Board. And this is clearly one of the best schools I've been at ever for the well-rounded approach to supporting students. So, you know, while, while some might be nervous about how well they're going to do academically, and socially, and I'm telling you, neither is a concern that I have because our school um, supports extremely well. And in terms of COVID, academically, you are exactly where you need to be to be successful. I don't know if there are questions specifically for me, uh, Mr. Schmidt, or not. Yes, Mr. Arden, we actually have two questions that we think you're the best person to answer. <laughs> the first is, at this very moment, how many people attend South Carleton? At this moment, including about 28 new registrations, which is quite amazing, um, we're sitting at 1,142 students putting us in second place in the board for grade 9 to 12 population. There are some two schools that are grades 7 to 12 that the total with the 7 eights in there uh, uh, beat us out. But uh, So we're, we're one of the largest schools in the board for the high school grades. Awesome. Great. That's good news. Exciting news. Uh, okay. And one more question for you, Mr. Arden. It just came in today and um, uh, just wondering what entrances or what doors uh, students should um, come in on that very first day. So I assume obviously that the question is coming in terms of COVID safety and um, we do not uh, uh, require the board's protocols where different grades have different entrances and exits. And that is because we are quite safe uh, in what happens naturally in the mornings uh, here at South. And that is that buses arrive at different times staggered and they will tend to let you off, um, shall I say, spread out from each other. And you'll choose one of two uh, back entrances if you are being bused to, to our school and then the walk-up crowd will often choose the front entrance and as a result we really are quite spread out and so we don't have a stipulation with respect to what grade enters what uh, uh, entrance uh, you, you simply get off the bus and walk in and the, the, the campus is large enough that you'll be able to be spaced out you'll have a locker in a certain location uh, which you're free to go to when you arrive in the mornings. Um, and uh, also your classroom will be uh, opened and there will be an expectation because we don't don't want loitering in the halls during COVID uh, that you uh, then attend your classroom. Great. I think that's it for questions on our part. Um, so thank you so much for joining us. We will, uh, you're welcome to stay on or I know you're a busy person. So uh, we will continue on with our, the other Q&As with our panelists here. So thanks again for joining us.
Well, thank you. And I do have to head off to another meeting. Um, but obviously, if there was anything, uh, parents can email me uh, questions. But also, these, these incredible Link Crew leaders uh, um, are there to help you and will be con will continue to help you. So thanks a lot, guys. That was awesome. All right. So our next question is one we got from Steve McLean, and it is, what do you like most about South Carleton? So what I like most about this school is the people inside of it, and more specifically, the student body. The student body at South is so great. It is so easy to socialize with everyone you want to. For instance, one time in grade 10, my core group of buddies wanted to walk to Max during lunch, but I didn't want to because I didn't think we'd make it back in time. But I still had people I could hang out with in the calf. So I stuck around at school in the calf, but then I got bored there. So I, I went to open gym to play basketball with my other friends. And it's just, it's so great to have a school environment where you can do anything you want to do and not have to worry about if you know anyone else there. This all starts in grade nine though. So you have to put in the effort to get to know people then. Uh, it might be scary and intimidating at first, but the payoff down the road is 100% worth it. So our next question is regarding um, clubs and sports teams. So I know uh, we just got a question in more or less about um, our clubs going to be happening this year. So right now, um, I know the board and trustees, I believe, are still deciding. Everything's still up in the air in terms of if sports and clubs um, are happening and what they might look like with our current uh, COVID restrictions. But this question asks, how would you start a club or a sports team as a student? Um, South has countless teams and groups that you can join, um, including both competitive and intramural teams for most of our sports, arts clubs, and obviously our student council, um, which is uh, very involved in our school community. But if by some chance the, the club you want to start doesn't exist, try talking to any of your teachers, um, and they can direct you to another teacher who might uh, specialize in the area of activity. Um, for example, say you want to start a uh, I like a fashion club. I know we have I know we have a fashion club, but you want to talk to your homeroom teacher first, and then they can direct you to whatever teacher that they know has an interest in um, that sort of realm. Uh, but before you talk to that teacher, you're gonna want to um, be prepared though, uh, knowing what space you'll need for your club. So the gym, uh, the calf, the stage, uh, teacher's room, for example, what supplies you might need, um, days a week the club would meet, and uh, how you could work with the COVID guidelines, like maybe meeting online um, after school or uh, just limited amount of people, make sure we're social distancing and all that stuff. Um, also, if you are interested, I understand there's obviously dance class. I love dance classes at South, but um, if you're interested in sort of more dance happening at South, um, I'll be starting a dance club this year. So everyone is always welcome to join. All right, so this person from GMS asks, does every course have an exam and are there study groups for exams? So not every course has an exam. So classes like construction, auto and fitness won't have an exam, but there will likely be a big project at the end of the year called a summative. So some classes have an exam, but no summative. So in a regular year, a class might have an exam and a summative project. So in past years, each of these things would have been worth 15% of your final grade, so making them pretty important. Or a class with only an exam will be worth 30% of your final grade. But this year, it's up to the teachers if they offer an end of semester in-class evaluation or test. Uh, there would normally be a study session in the CAF called Coco and Cram. This is an event where all the grade nine students studied for their exams in the CAF with hot chocolate and different tables set up for different subjects. If there isn't a cocoa and cram this year, maybe think about attending a math help or science help session at lunch, or just for ask for extra help in class, or maybe start your own study group to get ready. All right, so this next question is, how will we get around the school in time? So, just like finding your classes, it'll probably take you a second to get used to your schedule, um, get used to the layout of the school and everything. Um, 
the school is pretty big, but it's just, honestly, it just takes some getting used to. Um, you'll maybe find yourself in a rush, maybe find yourself a bit lost, but again, you also only have two classes, so it's a bit easier. Um, to be honest, you'll probably like be in a hurry, but teachers, the teachers are super forgiving, especially in the first, um, the first week or two. So if you're late to class or anything like that, it should be no problem. It's just, you have to get used to it. So another student from GM asks, a GMS asks if there are any things you should never do in high school and what's the most important thing to focus on? As much as books and movies tell you that high school is super scary and that there are definitely like do's and don'ts of high school, um, it really isn't that scary. There are really no rules of things you shouldn't do within reason. Obviously, just follow the basic rules of respect and responsibility, and you'll be just fine. Um, however, one of the biggest things that you could do wrong is not being yourself. And yes, I know that sounds super cliche, trust me, um, but you're going to have a lot more fun if you're not worried about... Uh, if you're not worried about what others think of you. And um, yes, I obviously know this is easier said than done. I'm going into grade 12 and I'm still worried about what everyone thinks of me, but I'm starting to get over that. And I've been in high school for four years now. And so it takes some time, but uh, just really focus on being yourself. Um, in terms of what you should focus on, everyone's uh, idea of what you should focus on um, will be different and everyone will have a different answer. Uh, generally, grade nine is sort of a tester year or like see what you like year. Um, join and try out for everything you're even mildly interested in so that by grade 10 you found your people and what you really enjoy. For your classes, um, I definitely focused more academically um, rather than extracurricular because I'm not super sporty. Um, definitely love dance, but can't really escape. Um, but um, for your classes, try not to focus on individual grades or assignments, um, but rather the overall concept. So I understand some of you may be a little worried about um, if you're behind from having two years online or uh, your teacher online wasn't so great or everyone's going to be in the same place. Teachers are going to review and teach you all the concepts you need to know to continue on in high school. Obviously, um, do your best, but don't slack off. Um, and also don't hyper focus on final grades this year, as there is always room for improvement. I know people who got 60s and 70s in grade 9 and 10, but now going into grade uh, 12 and in grade 11 are getting super high 80s and 90s. On a final note, try not to get too wrapped up in being cool, whatever definition that um, may be for you whatever cool even is, and just be yourself. All right. So our next question is from a student from GMS, and it was, will I be in the same homeroom as my friends from my old school? So let's hope that you're going to have some people that you know maybe um, on your first day, but don't be scared if you walk into your class and you look around and you know nobody. Because trust me, a huge part of high school is making friends. Like I have made so many new friends and have changed friend, friend groups constantly. So don't make that a worry because you grow and you find people that share your interests and that's just natural. Um, and so another piece of advice I would give you just about your courses and picking your classes is never uh, pick a certain class based on the sole reason that all your friends are taking it because people have different interests um, and high school is really a very core or important part of your life where you're exploring all of the interests that you have try to step out of your comfort zone um, try things that maybe you wouldn't try because I guarantee that you will make friends throughout that process and you're gonna find out things that you never knew about yourself for sure I'm just going to interrupt you here, Nate. <laughs> um, 
Thank you guys so much for your answer. So Nate's going to get to this question and I, and I've been checking my emails and Nate, this is like, everyone has been asking this question. Okay. So what's the first day going to look like for grade nine specifically? Lots of people have been asking about when are they going to get their schedules? So I'm saying this so that people who are kind of maybe tuning out slightly will stop and be like, okay, I need to listen to this answer. Not that any of your answers were not interesting earlier, <laughs> but I know this is an important question question um, that a lot of our grade nines have. So I will mute and let uh, Nate take over here. Yeah. All right. So the big question is, what will the first day of school look like for grade nines? So all students will get an email from their block A teacher on Wednesday, September 8th. So they will tell you your room number. You will get your course timetable in that class on Thursday, September 9th. Uh, your teacher will go over the COVID protocols and class procedures. Then you will be joined by your link crew leaders who have some fun activities planned for you and including a tour of the school. So my question kind of adds on to that. Um, there, there's the, the daily schedule. So my question, I think it was, what will the school day be like? And I'm not sure what your teacher, your teachers will go through with you and stuff, probably the protocols and everything, but this is what it, your classes are going to look like. So you're going to go to your first class for 815 and then it's a two and a half hour class. Um, then you're sent off to your lunch. I believe you guys are in the CAF for grade nine. So you guys head off to the CAF for 60 minutes and then after that at 11, 11.45, you go to your, your last class and it's pretty easy because you have two classes and then you go to the bus at 2.15, you're let out. So it's pretty simple and that's, that's what it's gonna be for now. Thanks, Ginny. Yes, for now, we're, we're all being flexible. I wanted to add because we have this up, um, that uh, there was a question that came in about, you know, is there a recess? What's lunch going to look like? So there's your answer. There is a 60 minute lunch and we have a little bit more details and a little bit about where you can go for lunch. Um, recess, as you guys may know it in grade eight, uh, is different in high school um, and, and definitely different this year. So it'll be, um, you have those lovely classes, long classes. It'll be up to each teacher um, who will just kind of decide when you get a break, whether that's a break going outside for a walk um, or a bit of a nutrition break or a stretch break inside the classroom. It'll really be up to each teacher as to when um, and how long those breaks are, but know that you have that 60 minutes to look forward to um, where you will get that break. Okay, so I think, uh, Laura, you're, uh, you're on next. Okay, so the next question was, will we have lockers? And the answer is yes, we do get lockers this year. Um, there, there's going to be like a sort of designated zone for each grade, um, but the assigning of the lockers or like the registration process is still being determined, but we will have lockers. So that's great. Our next one uh, sort of goes back to Mrs. Genioli's uh, point about lunch slash recess and will I be able to eat lunch with my friends? So the answer is yes, so long as they're in your grade. Um, as for the plan right now, which all of you know can change uh, by the blink of an eye or a snap of a finger, grade nines, you are designated to have lunch in the calf at your locker or outside. Uh, Sal's property has numerous picnic tables out front and bleachers all around the school and like the, the sports fields um, and which you're able to eat out um, or at uh, when the weather is nice. And I think it's already starting to get a little bit cold now, but hopefully it warms up a little bit before uh, school starts. Um, I think personally, you guys won the lottery with having the calf to eat, um, especially as grade nines meeting their peers for the first time from different schools. The calf is very open and easy to socialize in. Um, if you're wondering where the other grades are eating, um, if you want to maybe grab lunch with them outside or something, grade tens will be designated to gym A and B, which is uh, our biggest gym. Grade 11s will be in gym C. 
C and grade 12 will be in the library. And of course, uh, again, as I said, everyone will have um, the option to eat by their lockers or uh, outside. You can always take a little, um, if you're speedy, you can maybe walk to, walk to Timmy's if you think you can get there and back within an hour. Or even, um, what is it, Circle K, not Max. I'm so used to calling it Max. Going out of Circle K for your uh, lunch break. That's great. All right. Um, okay. I'm going to, for our panelists here, I'm going to kind of go off the script a little bit, but I think you can follow along. Um, I've been compiling the questions that have been coming in. So I'm going to go down to the bottom of our list here and I'll just ask the questions to our group and whoever feels like they can answer the question or maybe Mr. Schmidt would have a good answer. He can go ahead and answer these questions. So, um, uh, one of the questions is, uh, it was about lunch, right? And so we just talked about that a little bit, um, but also about the school buses. What is that like? Now, I have never been on a school bus on my way to South Carleton. So I don't know if any of you guys have on here, but maybe just wondering like how full are they last year? Now, last year was different because of the cohorts, but in a typical year, if you remember your grade nine, you guys, were they pretty full? So if someone's able, or a few of you able to answer to that question of you know how full how distance do you think you'll be on the school buses okay i can answer this um so what i remember from before covid obviously with covid like you get a seating plan um but before covid the buses were pretty full i'd say like most cases people were like filling up all the seats um and it did go by like grade nines are sitting in the front and then as the grades like go by like the grade 12s are in the back but um yeah it, you get used to it it like it all depends on this year it's honestly like a huge question mark i have no clue if we're gonna have like seating plans they caught me by surprise last year but i guess we'll have to wait and see I remember my bus last year was not packed in the least. So I was on like the country bus and there was maybe 10 kids on it and that's it. So it is a coin toss on who you're going to get for your bus. Yeah, that's all I have to say about that. <laughs> We do know, uh, if you've been following the news, any of you, that there are a lack of bus drivers. So it may be different this year, but typically our bus buses are not very full coming to South Carlton um, that I have noticed. Okay, here's our next question. Um, are there gender neutral or ungendered washrooms? I believe so. I personally have never had to um, use them, but I believe they are near gym A and gym B. I think there's one in there. And obviously, like if you feel uncomfortable or anything like that, you can talk to your homeroom teacher and they um, they know best. They can send you to uh, any bathroom or wherever you feel most comfortable. So in order for it to be like personalized to you, I would suggest talking to your um, whatever teacher you have, whether it's your homeroom teacher or uh, the teacher of that subject. Yep, for sure. There's one by the gym, the main gym. And then I believe there's another one uh, just in the main hall near the office. Um, but I'll have to double check on my map on that one uh, if there are any others in the school. But Ainsley, great answer. Just ask your teacher. They're more than willing to help you out with that, which leads me to the next question. <laughs> about the school and where are things um will the question was are people going to have access to a map um and also are there going to be tours um and so i'll kind of take that really quickly um we uh you guys um, our grade nines wouldn't know this but our school has been totally renumbered since um we all left back in april whenever that was uh, so all the classrooms all the rooms have brand new numbers so our link leaders as amazing as they are if they ask you for where a particular room number is they may need to pull out their own map <laughs> And teachers also may need to pull out their own map because we're used to the old numbers, but never fear. Um, we will figure out a way to make sure that everyone does get a map. It's not something for safety and security reasons that we're able to post a map on the school website, but we will make sure that um, all our grade nines are provided with a map, whether it comes out in an email from your, um, from your teacher or however that's gonna work, we will make sure that, that uh, will, um, you will have a map uh, to look off of. I'm a geography teacher. 
I love maps. Um, okay, the other thing was, are there going to be tours? And uh, yes, you will get a tour on that very first day at some point. And that's all the information we can really give you. Um, it will happen earlier rather than later, and you will be touring with your your link leaders and in your group for that morning uh, with your first period class or part of that first period class. Uh, we were still working at the details, but yes, you'll get a brief tour and hopefully you'll have a map to help you uh, as you're looking around. You can write things on there and do that. Um, also, okay. Mr. Genioli, oh. before we move on, I just want to add that um, we might not know your class, like the exact numbers, because they'll be all new to us. But if you say it's a science class, we all of the science classes are in the same hall. All of the math classes are in the same hall. Um, most of the language classes are in the same hall too. So if you say, hey, where is this English class? We can direct you to what hall it will be in. Therefore, you can look for your specific class number. Excellent. Thank you. Okay, I think we're getting near the end of our questions, but I see that there is one question and Ainsley has offered to answer it. The question was, how would you try to get extra credits during summer or during the school year? So the reason why I want to answer this question is because I have actually taken a summer school course every summer um, of high school. So between grade 9 and grade 10, I took civics and careers online. Between grade 10 and grade 11, I took grade 11 English online and between and this summer I'm taking uh, grade 12 physics online. So for me personally, I knew sort of what pathway I wanted to go for university um, fairly early on. And I knew I wanted to take all three sciences, all of the math. I wanted to continue to take dance and I wanted to still have a there. So you're sort of going to want to try to look ahead. I understand you're going to grade nine and it's hard to know, even going into grade 12, to know what uh, to know what you want to do for the rest of your life. So you just want to really, for me personally, keep your options open. So uh, if you're looking through, I think it's called Zello now that we're using to plan out our classes, um, you're going to want to sort of, at least what I did, plan out uh, like, oh, I want to take dance this year, but I also want to take this business class if it's really important to you. And then if you see your schedules filling up, you might want to consider, um, you might want to consider taking a summer school class. So I would recommend, I'm doing physics right now. It is very difficult. I would recommend taking more of a, an English class or a social science class if you're trying to get that extra credit, um, as I find the value of science in the classroom is a lot better than trying to teach yourself um, all of grade 12 physics alone um, in your bedroom all summer. So I don't really know if there's any way to get extra credits uh, throughout the school year, but um, definitely throughout the summer. And if you have any uh, questions about this, you can always reach out to Guidance because they know the most about course planning and what um, courses are available online. Great, thanks Ainsley. Uh, okay, here's a question for uh, any of you, our students, or all of you who want to answer it. What kind of school supplies do you think you should have for that first day uh, or first two days? Pencils? Okay, I don't know. <laughs> oh, sorry. Okay. Um, I don't know. You want to go? Sorry, I'll mute. No, you go, you go, you go. Okay, so I guess it would all depend on this, the type of class that you're taking. Like, um, obviously, well, now you guys have like two classes a day, so you can kind of like narrow down what you bring depending on the week since you're going to like change classes every week. But um, like say if you're taking art classes, then those supplies are different than if you're taking like of like a math class for math obviously like you'll get a calculator like uh, rulers that sort of stuff just kind of depends really on what you're taking like if you have a physics class or dance class you're one you're gonna want to like bring in some clothes to change into um so that you're not sweaty like driving home or into like on your other on the bus um but yeah it's it's not um like don't over prepare but be prepared for sure depending on your class Yeah, I was going to say something along the lines, like, 
for sure, even like throughout all of high school, definitely, definitely have a lot of pencils and a lot of like loose sheets of paper. People are always going to ask, but yeah, you should probably hold on to some pencils and loose paper. But for me, I usually go in on the first day and you're kind of getting your schedule the day before school. So you're not going to even know what you need at all. Um, I usually go in with paper and pencils and then the teachers will tell you everything you need and you go out after school and, and gather your supplies for whatever. But if you have dance, definitely bring extra clothes. That's great. Excellent. That, that's what I was hoping to hear. <laughs> In general, the first two days, you don't need to have everything, you know, have a few things to write with. Or if you know when you get that email the day before that you're in fitness or phys ed or dance, right, have something to change into. Your teacher will lead the way. And on that first day, we know that not everyone's going to have everything they need. Um, I will add uh, that if you have your own Chromebook or laptop, please, please, uh, we would invite you and even recommend highly that you do bring that. Um, our school has some classroom Chromebooks, but not enough for everyone. And more than ever this year, we um, are, uh, like last year, we're using uh, Chromebooks and uh, laptops and things as much as we can to avoid um, all the different contact points. Um, that's gonna lead me to, I think, some questions from Mr. Schmidt if he can handle them here. So <laughs> one question, because I think he knows the answer to this or close to it. Uh, the first one is, um, what is, uh, how many grade nines do we have coming in approximately? You're putting a lot of pressure on me now. Um, I, we, do, we do have a significant uh, number. We're looking at around 350 grade nines. So it's a, it's a huge cohort and one of the biggest ones we've had in a while. Um, but but there's new registrations happening and things are are moving. So but somewhere in the three hundreds. So if I want to keep talking on that, you guys are a big chunk of the school, which is awesome. So um, you're not alone. You're not alone. You got the yellow shirts and you got all all of you guys together. You know, experiencing this together. So um, you guys are going to be a big chunk of the school and a big part of the energy of the school. Great, you got thank another you. One, another one for me? Yes, I do. Uh, I'm going to give you this one because I don't want to answer it. No. Um, what is what's the dress code at South Carlton? Oh boy, you're giving me all the good ones. Um, I I know you know what. Uh, some of you probably wish there was a dress code because then you wouldn't have to think about things in the morning. You just go up and you know, you put on your your clothes. But um, I I. There, there is no dress code, but, and this is something that maybe uh, your teachers could talk to you about too and, and admin, but as long as you're looking respectful, so there's no, uh, say, inappropriate logos on your shirt or anything like that. Um, you know, like big pictures of uh, marijuana or anything like that. You know, we're not going to be supporting that kind of stuff. And then you look respectful. So, I mean, I, I know that dressing and what you wear is part of your identity and you want to be able to express yourself. But um, generally speaking, um, you know, most things are accepted. But if you're if you're getting into things that encourage, you know, uh, drug use or violence, then that's where the admin would have a problem. Um, so if you're wondering, you know, hey, can I wear this? Best thing to do would be to ask your teacher and say, listen, uh, I want to wear this. Um, and then, and then as it gets hot, sometimes you gotta make sure you're dressed appropriately and you're um, um, not wearing too little, I guess you could say, but that's something for the admin to talk about. And um, in general, when I walk around our, our school, everyone's expressing their own identity and they're doing it very nicely and there's no issues there. So I expect that you guys would continue along that trend. And if you have any questions, I think probably vice principals and administration would be the ones to ask ask specifically. Also, I'm just going to add, um, the school can get really cold sometimes. So since we have lockers, bring a sweater and just have a sweater to keep in your locker. Also, that way, if there's any problem with what you're wearing, which I've never had a problem with anything I've worn at South Carlton, um, 
just like you can have it to cover up if you really need to, but it gets really cold. So bring a sweater. Or really hot. It can get very hot in some classes. So layer, layer your clothing, have like a lighter shirt on. And then if you get really warm, take your sweater off or put it on if you're cold. Be prepared for anything. Excellent. Okay, those are some great answers. Listen, we have just a couple of questions left and I can quickly answer those and then I think we'll get to kind of wrapping up here. Um, there were a couple of questions that came in and I think we answered them earlier, but we'll just reiterate um, about clubs. And uh, so yes, we ho hope to offer as many clubs as we can. Um, at this point, they will have to be offered virtually and then we'll just kind of go on from there. So stay tuned to, um, as you can see on there, the Instagram, South Carlton Instagram, Instagram will have all the information as well as websites about new clubs that you can join um, and uh, can be a part of or current clubs that we have that you can uh, you can jump in on. Uh, the other question was, are we going to have cohorts, um, which we had briefly mem uh, mentioned last year we had cohorts. This year, um, not the whole cohort A, cohort B, which was, you know, half of the alphabet in the school at one day and then half of the alphabet in the other. We're all going to be together, but we are going to use the word cohorts, meaning staying within your grade. Um, so that's why, you know, you're in your class in the morning and at lunch we're hoping all the grades will either be in their locker areas which are also going to be um, designated by grade or in their designated area so grade nines you're the cafeteria awesome place to have your lunch or, or outside so that when we uh, speak about cohorts at this point we're talking about um, grades so trying to keep as much as you can uh, connected um, within your grades and not trying to kind of go to different parts of the school or different parts um, uh, just so we can lim eliminate as much of the close contacts as possible Okay, so I think that's it for our questions. Um, I believe I will uh, kind of bring it out to Ainsley, who's going to just uh, kind of finish off here. Oh, I should say actually, because I don't think I have it in there. I am recording this. Uh, so if there's something you wanted to go back and be like, ah, they answered that question, but I can't remember. Um, it will be available within the next day or two on our South Carlton YouTube channel. Um, and so I do want to thank all of our panelists, Nate, Ainsley, Ginny, and Laura for being here with us and Mr. Schmidt and uh, Ms. Pike. Uh, as well as uh, Mr. Arden for being a part of today. We're so excited to meet our grade nines. Uh, we can't wait, just a, a few more days away. Uh, and then, so I'll just leave it off uh, with Ainsley here. So all of your questions were so great. Um, I really hope we were able to answer them as well as you want us to answer them. But uh, this does not mean that you do not have any more opportunity to ask any lingering questions you might have. Save them for the first day when you meet up with your link leaders and in your groups. Um, we're here to make Green 9 as fun and as stress-free as possible. So ask us as many questions as you want. Um, I often get called question girl because I have so many questions. So if you're in my group, you there is never too many questions ever. Um, I also want to thank you uh, all for coming as we appreciate your interest and enthusiasm for the start of the new chapter in your life. We want to wish you all luck for your first uh, set of classes and a brand new school year. And if I don't see you um, or you don't see me before then, by some chance, we just don't cross paths. Uh, stay safe, stay healthy, and just uh, be yourself. Thank you, guys. Bye.